Hunter had this radio station. So this is the thing with the Perth hip hop thing, and especially the Australian hip hop thing. What was awesome about Hunter was that he was the main driver and pusher for it has to be Australian hip hop, has to be Australian hip hop, we've got to push Australian hip hop. So we had this like little community radio, 93.7, which is now um, Nova in Perth. But yeah, 93.7 was this little, <laughs> this joint Armadale, which is like south of Perth. It's hell ghetto. We used to drive there and the show was at 1 a.m., start at 1 a.m. till 3. And we just basically took uh, turntables in there, set it up, spit, spun tunes, freestyled, talk shit, like got blazed fucking smaggoted and just went on there. <laughs> <laughs> but because we filled this slot, like the radio were like, yeah, you can't like swear and stuff. But we just kept going in there. And we had an awesome listening shift and stuff. And that's how we kind of promoted the Hilltop Hood show as well. Oh, wow. And so was that Hunter's, like that was his show? That was his show with Army, but it was mainly Hunter going down all the time. That being late 90s, I mean, tell us a little bit, I guess tell us a little bit about Hunter because he's no longer with us yeah. anymore. I never had um, the opportunity to yeah. meet him, yeah. but obviously there's the Hunter Cup and yeah. Yeah. from everything I hear and see, he's obviously like an iconic, you know. He, he was anyone that did their thing that were, they had the talent, but they were sheepish about it. He would be like the guy that would kick you over the line. He would be the guy who would push his shit. If, if it was Australian hip hop and you freestyled, he'd be like, fucking sick, fucking do it, do it. Or just rap in general, just do it, do it. You're sick. Killer. Taking that person from like, oh, I kind of do it to like fucking, yeah, I'm going to do it, yeah. I'm going to record, get in the booth, record, put it down, put it out. Yeah, I heard he was a, a real strong advocate of Australian hip hop. I can't remember who it was that I was speaking to, but they were saying like, you could catch Hunter at a gig and he'd buy all the demos and everything like everything he could get his hands on. Everything if it was Australian. Australian. And yeah, he would get it. So like, Bill, that's the thing. Like he was like, he, get, he gave me his like, his records and stuff and, and, and his crate. And then he had a separate crate for, for his son. He goes, I want you to hold on to this because um, I want Marley to hear, hear like what, in my opinion, what Australian hip hop is. So he's got this crate of records and it's like wow. all this shit that's in pristine condition. I've just got it there fucking. <laughs> wow, that'd be crazy to go yeah. through, man. But he was like, he had so much passion and like character. Like the song I'm a, is just fucking genius. It's, oh, I'm, it's so genius, man. At the time, it seemed so like everyone was like, oh, Bogan, but all of us that knew him, and then when people listened to it, they go, yeah, that's sick. <laughs> By the way, funny, funny story about that join is that back in, I mean, when would that have dropped? Mid 2000s? That was no, nah, that was early 2000. So that well, was 2001 or 2002, I think we did Done Deal. Well, there's a, there's a story that. There was um a couple of dudes who used to do a show on this station. Yeah. In like, I, I think it was like 06, yeah. around the mid 2000s. And they dropped that joint on air. <laughs> and then that was the end of their show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Crazy. So man. every time someone brings up that song, <laughs> it just triggers that memory. And to this day, I don't know if that's exactly the truth. But they weren't no longer on air, so I definitely know they got, you know, something obviously happened. <laughs> but yeah, story goes that it was because of that song. Um, Hilarious. But I guess, so tell us, how did you guys like, link up? Yeah. Monday night, Hyde Park Hotel. Oh, so he was one of the guys that yeah, was regularly going there. Regularly going there as well. We all, everyone just met and we was like, because we were all like, oh, you do hip hop? I was sick. Yeah. And then we'd just start freestyling. I was sick. I was sick. Then we just go out, you know, and sort of bomb and shit, and then then we'd go everyone's digits, and then I like the thing why I link with Hunter a lot as well is because he was closer than Scotty and Shabazz. He's on fucking Craigie, which is like north side, and, and Hunter and Army were closer. They were like kind of m like near the city more, so I'd go to their both of those ha their house a lot. 
And um, yeah, with Hunter, we used to just go there and hang out in um, MIRC as well and talk to trials and shit. Because <laughs> we're all fucking nerds. <laughs> <laughs> It was hilarious, but um, yeah, and then we'd just sit there and just fucking make funny music because Hunter was like, he just had that funny kind of dark humor as well, just like kind of shock, shocking humor, you know, like like to kind of piss the chicks off and stuff, and <laughs> <laughs> just to say how loud this shit. And you guys actually did a like a full length project together. And yeah. that's where that Woody Woodpecker joint. So that's that's where Woody Woodpecker and that's where I'm a cunt's on. That, that, that was done deal. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's And that's that, that was kind of for, and that's when we got like, we did a lot of syllabolic features on it. And so it was kind of like a syllabolic thing as well. Like, you know, like drafts first verses are on there. Like that you can get, you know, that's the first kind of, appearances he's had on record um i think i can't remember if layla because layla did because there was culture of kings actually culture of kings was 2002 wasn't it yeah well i think it was either 01 or 02 yeah it was around I think that with time. layla because layla and drafto that was their first ever appearance on record it was done deal so that's why crew sort of normally caught cop that record mm. and why it slowly kind of keeps ticking over it's like oh what's the first thing they were ever on it's like yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah right and then um at what point culture kings 2 yeah was that after the album that you did with hunter yeah yeah culture kings 2 had one of my favorite australian joints which was the hunter joint about being on the doll oh, the uh jam roll that joint that's so sick. and the the who produced that optimus so that's okay. an opto beat yeah that's an ill beat yeah, and then man. just the concept of the song and so like so good we was he just like, nailed yeah. it man just nailed it we was sitting there listening to it going <laughs> this dude has to be on a doll <laughs> fully man or we has were, been on the doll because he man, just he painted was still such on a, the doll like like i think he didn't start working until he was like 30 or something like damn he, i don't know I don't know why he started working. What? Oh, that's right. Because he, because of Mali. Because then he had a kid. It's like, oh, I better start working, you know. <laughs> <laughs> for, that, for that long time, man, like, for that, like, we were all just on the dole, just fucking, you know, getting mad, MAGA, getting wasted, fucking eating mushrooms, fucking bombing, rapping, making beats. Living that life. Yeah, it was fucking killer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Taxpayer, for financing this. <laughs> oh shit. There's so many, so many lines in that that I was just like, wow, the shit's just too funny. And had that, you know, real strong Australian accent. Yeah. You know, he did not try to shy away from it. If anything, nah. Yeah. he went full head steam yeah. for it. Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, that was some funny shit. But he he yeah, he used to write heaps. He wrote a lot. There's so much stuff that's just on paper. Like he used to write a lot, a lot. So, I mean, as someone that was close to him, you know, I mean, how was that? Because it sounds like he had a big influence on you, the whole Perth scene. Yeah. And, like the whole country. Yeah. It was, um, yeah, it was pretty full on. He was, um, it was weird because he was going through like a lot of, before that actually happened, he started getting pretty um, depressed because he kind of broke up with his miss, missus at the time. And that was, you know, um, um yeah because he's having a kid with her and stuff it was it was kind of a bit full on for him so mm. there was times that were pretty heavy then and then when that hit it was like oh fuck it's like what no like yeah man it the... hit everyone pretty i mean it hit everyone pretty hard but then when it started kind of you know like then visiting visiting him and seeing the kind of physical state state and the change it's really fucking full on. And then the the physical state starts to happen and then it's the mental breakdown. And then like, but the thing that kept him fighting through it was fucking rap. Like I would, like, it amazed me how fucking driven he was to still rap in the fucking state of pain he was. His voice is fucked. He's fucking just medicated to the fucking eyeballs. 
but he would still fucking write raps. I had to bring my NPC and fucking recording gear into the, the um to the fucking hostel and shit. Like oh, bro, I see he go, man, bring your shit in. Yep, no worries, bro. <laughs> wow. Like laying in a fucking in a deathbed, pretty much, and then fucking we had to like anchor the thing up. I'd set the mic up in front of him, and he'd just fucking still rap, man. Like they would tell him you can't go and do a show because he like I think the last show was at Rocket Room, I think in Perth. And man, it was so emotional, dude. Like, crew of fucking like just crying and shit, like in the audience. Like, it was full on, man. Because by that stage, everybody knew. Yeah, everyone knew. But I think they were sad that they knew that it's coming close, but they were just so emotionally like in awe of his, like, this is how much he loves it and he doesn't give a fuck. Like, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die rapping. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Hey. And he actually, like, put out a dvd or some sort of documentary on like yeah it was a it was actually the documentary was these dudes that wanted to do the documentary on him so it wasn't so much him wanting to do the documentary it was these guys that wanted to do it he had an idea to kind of do a self-biography thing as well anyway but then that it because of his sickness it was too hard for him to do mm-hmm. and um and kind of focus on it and then these guys did the documentary so at the time there's this documentary that was made, which is called, I think it's called The Hunter Documentary. I can't even watch it. <laughs> yeah, that's Pretty understandable. Yeah. I haven't I haven't seen it. I just remember a trailer came up about it. Yeah. And yeah, the yeah. impression I, I got was like, wow, he was like documenting. He was still putting in work, you know, like all the way through. I was yeah. like, shit. That's, yeah. That's some. It's pretty heavy. Yeah, that's some wild they shit. Were, they were there. They were, they were around him a lot as well mm. and so you know like as a like your personal space thing having the camera there all the time and them and also them trying to not direct it but you know oh yeah can you kind of say that again and it's just like you know it's why? not that kind of yeah yeah fucking just feel like and he's that's <laughs> just funny because it's like he just wants things to happen. Like, Come on, fucking, you know, let's just fucking do it. Just fucking do it. Ah, fucking, you know, just fucking rap, man. Just fucking record me. Fucking, why are you fucking around? Why are you messing around? And he'd just get, it was, it was the funny thing because he'd always get pissed off because I'd sit there and nah, fucking, I'm just going to fucking fix this. And, oh, no, you need to record it again. And he's like, nah, fucking, I've already fucking recorded it. Fuck, you're fucking wasting my time. <laughs> he just gets so frustrated. So I could, like, when they were doing that, like, <laughs> it, was, it was funny because, you know, they obviously are trying to fucking get the, the shot or whatever, but he's like, fucking, I'm fucking, you fucking missed it. It's gone. <laughs> now I heard, you know, obviously that he has a real strong character and a funny dude. Yeah. And you can hear it in his music. Yeah. You know, like, like I said, on that jam roll, just line yeah. after line, that shit. That's just- Hunter. That is Hunter down to the T. We used to go to his flat and he would sit and watch fucking TV and because he couldn't fucking bothered get finding the remote he wouldn't change the channel like it's just like why the fuck are we watching this because i can't be fucking changing fucking hell (laughs) so if i if 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 i asked you what's you know what's one of the funniest hunter memories that you you know that you can pull off the top (laughs) oh i don't know um there's so many, uh, but one funny one. We were staying with um, <laughs> we were staying at um, Kirk's joint. Who was um, he used to do this thing with PJ called pulling strings. Which oh, were, Kirk Ray. Yeah, Kirk Ray. Yeah, shout outs to Kirk. Shout man. outs to Kirk. Kirk yeah, and Kirk. he will remember this as well. It's fucking hilarious. So I think we go out and T T was over. And we're all drinking and stuff, but then Hunter just fucking smashes it. He's just fucking goes hard. <laughs> and then we're like, all right, we gotta fucking go to bed. Like, Charles left and fucking Kirk's like, all right, boys, good night. <laughs> He's still like trying to drizzle. Man, we gotta go to sleep. We gotta wake up tomorrow. All right, all right, all right. I can go to sleep. And like, we're in the Kirk's back, back kind of shit, uh, like room or whatever. And it's got like a sliding door. And then there's a gate because he's got a pool. So I'm sleeping. And like I wake up, like fuck, it's freezing. What the fuck? And then I seen the sliding door open, and I'm like, I I wake up hearing like, and I just thought it was like the wind, like banging something. I'm like, what the fuck? It's fucking cold. Fucking cold. I see the sliding door open. I'm like, 
oh, fuck. We'll run out and fucking Hunter's like, he's so maggot, he doesn't know where he is. And he's shaking the gate, going, fucking let me out. Let me out. <laughs> Kurt comes fucking out and sees us there. He's going, what the fuck's going on? And I go, oh, man, I'm sorry, dude. I don't know. I'm trying to fucking like get Hunter out of it. And I just, I'm like trying to pull him off. And he's like not fucking budging. And so I start fucking punching him. He's still not letting go. I'm just punching him. And then finally he kind of looked at me. He's like, oh, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, okay. And then he just kind of zombied in. And I was like, fuck, if that dude, because the, the gate he walked into and then tried to go out of, there's the pool there. He was so maggoted, like, fuck it. He could have just fallen in and just drowned. He was so blind. Shit. And then the other thing of that was... um. I'll never forget that night too. Charles just, <laughs> Charles just took a photo of him pissing and like he could just see the head of his cock. <laughs> and it's just this funniest photo. <laughs> we just from Charles T he's like, Man, look at this photo. I got his head in. <laughs> and he's just like real maggot shirt off like You There's many that... more, like, he stole fucking Rex's hunt's fucking carton from, like, it was like, we found this fuck. we are walking, like, I think it was after a gig, we are walking past, with Brand, DJ Brand, mm. yeah, um, and um, we were walking back, and there, there was this, we walked through this hotel, cutting through, and there was this fucking carton in front of the door, and it was like, to Rex Hunt, thanks for fucking blah, 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 and they just fucking racked it. <laughs> 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 I think that was the same run, man. Oh, fuck. So he liked his beers. He fucking loved his beer, man. <laughs> what else? I mean, there's so many, I don't know, there's so many Hunter stories. And like the thing with Hunter, because he's like gets on the pierce and fucking yarning to everyone. He'll lose his voice before he gets on stage. So like the first night, he's like, fucking, you can't have too many beers. I was trying to chill him on the beers before the show. Fucking got maggoted and then like, the, no, he got maggoted the first night, and then the next thing is the show, and he kind of lost his voice. And then we started doing the show, and like he was like just powering through it, but you could hear he was tearing his voice. And he's like, "Man, I don't want to. I, I just cut the set short." And then I and then I kind of crowd hype, like basically dissing him, saying, "Hunter wants to cut the set <laughs> set short." <laughs> when I say Hunter, you say <laughs> when I say Hunter is a you say Hunter is a. He's like, "Fuck are you!" And he's got so revved up because I used to give him heaps of shit and piss him off because I knew he'd get frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the lesson. Oh, yeah.